I feel like you guys are tilted. Hey, this is just you, just a little bit. I feel like you guys should see better than that. There we go. Oh, it's so patchy in the beginning. Or maybe it's just on my end. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? We're just going to share this out real quick and then we'll go live on Facebook, too. To my channel, hit that share button. I wish this patchiness wouldn't be so bad in the beginning. The rare whiskey or the whiskey of the week is not Crown Royal, by the way. It's just it's just a bag covering it. Uh In Discord, that's all we gotta do, and we're done. Oof. There we go. All right, we're gonna go live on Facebook. Hope you guys are ready for a fun night. I am truly excited. Oh, I got upgraded level two. That up right there. Look like that. <laughs> yeah, and we'll slide this over just a hair. And get everything in there. That way, everybody can see the greatness. All right, so we have everything set up. Everybody's live. Every Hope you guys are having a wonderful day, guys. It is Friday. It is time for the weekend. We have our whiskey of the week. It is hidden underneath this here. All right, so uh, usually the whiskey of the week is uh, something that gets chosen, obviously, throughout the week. But today's is not from this week. It is from actually last week. The only reason why it's from last week is because we didn't do that many whiskeys this week to make a choice from. Um, if I would have had to do one this week, it would have only been one of the options because I've only done, like, one whiskey. I think the other one was a tequila, and I've done some beers. Um, yeah, cute. No dollar. You are. So that's what we come up with is that. And I didn't want to um, do like I've been doing where I leave the bottle hidden down here forever. I want you guys to be able to see the bottle. And maybe you can guess and see what the whiskey bottle of the week is. It is not Crown Royal. I promise. It is not. Uh, Crown Royal does not make a, a cylindrical bottle. So, as you can see there, a little bit of gold in there, but it is not Crown Royal. And if you guess it, heck, I'll buy you a bottle because I don't think anybody can guess what it is. <coughs> I didn't even tell pretty lady what a bottle it was. Today. So, I also figured out... Uh, so Pretty Lady's been having this weird sound that G, like every now and again, it would make this weird like sound like something touching or whatever, like really fast. It would dink. And uh, I was looking earlier, I was in her battery terminals. It got loose from me taking the battery in and out last weekend. And uh, I tightened everything down and I was like, hmm, there's supposed to be a bolt right there. And there's a bolt missing out of the bell housing right there. And I'm assuming that's what's causing her sound issue there. Uh, Brittany says, hello, hello, or she says, hey, 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 girl. Again, guys, the bottle of the week is not Crown Royal. It is something different than Crown. Uh, if I would have chose one from this week, it would have had to been the Buchanan's right here, the scotch. It's a blended scotch whiskey. It is the only whiskey we've done this week. The other one was a tequila, and we made our own drink one night. We've done a bunch of weird stuff this week, so... This one is actually from last week's videos. Um, it is something very awesome that I haven't tried before. I've tried a version, I guess you could say, of it because I tried one with the same name, but it's a totally different model. Um, <coughs> but all in all, it is a great bottle. It is a. It was the close second for last week's video or whiskey of the week because it was Buffalo Trace last week. 
Um, this one here has kind of the same bottle shape as you can uh, see. It kind of looks like a, a beer. But uh, there you go. You can see a little bit better there. Um, it's a little bit cylindrical with a tall gooseneck on it. It's not terrible. Not bad. Really, really good whiskey. Um, we done a video today. Today's video was pretty weird for the most part. I'm not a huge pumpkin fan, right? So uh, Blue Moon has these new beers out called uh, Harvest Pumpkin Wheat. And that's what we've done our video on today. If you want to check that out, it is uh, not linked anywhere, but it is on the channel. If you guys would like to go check that out, it is right then and there. You can go check that out right there. Um, also, yesterday we made another drink of our own. As you notice, the Bud Light tank is gone. Uh, we used it yesterday to create our own eggnog. It is the Southern Comfort Eggnog, and we used our um, traditional Southern Comfort, the original, not the black. We used Southern Comfort and one quart of um, Southern Comfort Eggnog, and you mix it together, and you make you a nice, nice fall drink. Uh, it turned out really, really good. Uh, there is another one that I'm going to be making that involves Fireball. It is an eggnog fire, and it is created by Fireball. And we will be buying some of that soon. I will actually be putting it out on the shelf next week. So I will be buying that. And then we'll be creating another eggnog drink out of those. Um, without further ado, once I finish this beer here, we're going to go ahead and let you guys see what this bottle is here. And then we're going to be drinking it for the next little bit of the video. Because this one, it is something, it's one of those bottles that when I read it, it was like, hmm, that's going to be really good. Because it's got some sweet notes in it, a lot of fruits. And very well different oriented flavors that match a lot of the um, other bottles that we bought in the last few weeks. <laughs> We're here to fuck shit up. Yeah, fuck shit up and leave. That's what we do. Because if it breaks while I'm there, then it was broke before I got there. That's how I look at it. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, what else we got? The Jeep is doing great-ish. Uh, the Mustang is still broken. You got a ball out? Sweet! That would be nice. Give everybody a little, a little show. Uh, I know that's the only bad thing about Facebook, is Facebook gets to see all of my legs. <coughs> I mean, I could wear like a a blanket. I put a blanket over my legs. But I wear my underwear probably you ain't gonna see through them anyway. It's camouflage. I feel like my May fridge is not getting cold enough. Kind of lukewarm beer. Okay, guys, so what we got going on here is the Whiskey of the Week. So pretty much how I choose the Whiskey of the Week is usually I drink a bunch of whiskeys throughout the week. <laughs> and then whichever one is my favorite, I want to choose. Um, this one was actually supposed to have been last week's Whiskey of the Week, but it got pulled up by uh, Buffalo Trace, which actually took the lead because it tasted a trillion this time better. We're drinking at a local brewery. We just had one built in town here. Can't think of the name of it at the top of my head. But they just built one downtown, and me and Pretty Lady want to go down there and try it out and see how it is. But this one here is really good, and it's not made in America. It is another import. We've been buying a lot of imports lately on the channel, but I'm very excited with how they've been coming. So here we go. Ah, you thought the name was there. Yeah. All these crown bags. I have so many different crown bags. I got three in the Mustang. Uh. There we go. All right, so it's called the Irishman, guys. It is a really amazing drink. It is obviously imported. From none other than Ireland. It says, triple distilled for a smoother taste. This vatting of single pot steel and single malt whiskey is matured and aged with perfection in bourbon infused barrels. 
fragrant notes of green apple and honey will still give a spice summer fruits and deep finish fading of spiced oak and butterscotch. And when I've done a taste test on this the other week, it was exactly that times a billion. It is an amazing flavor. Uh, we got four or five around here. You and Ashley need to come up. We will hit them all. That would be pretty fun. We'll definitely have to do that. We were actually thinking about taking a vacation uh, for our birthdays because her birthday and my birthday are both in November, like a, two weeks apart. So we're going to hit the birthdays in the middle and maybe take like a week vacation. We haven't decided on where we want to go. Maybe that'd be something we can do. Come up there and we'll do some brewery hopping, if that's a thing. Uh, so this one here, it's only 40% alcohol, making it 80 proof. Not your strongest whiskey, especially coming from uh, Ireland. A lot of their stuff's a little bit stronger. But this has an amazing flavor and amazing taste, no matter how you look at it, honestly. And the color is something very good. That um, Y'all more than welcome to come here. I'm a November baby, too. Sweet. Mine's November 8th. Still older than I am. <laughs> uh, the color in this is really good. You can tell that they used a like a very kind of heavier barrel because usually the Irish or the Irish, most of them, I believe they go anywhere from three years to six years on most of their whiskeys. So it's not too bad. 30th. So yours is like four days before, three days after Pretty Ladies, somewhere in there. I think hers is the actually the day of, day before. I think hers is the 29th. It's on a Saturday. It's two Saturdays after mine. <laughs> or two Sundays. Because my birthday's on a Sunday and then her birthday's on a Sunday. <sighs> but all the birthdays. Because when I was growing up, birthdays were great. My brother's birthday is November 7th. Mine's November 8th. And my granny's is November 15th. And my sister's is December 1st. But now my nephew, my nephew was born. My sister's baby is his birthday is now November 11th. So we have nothing but November kids all year round, all the, for the most part, except for my other step brother and my cousin. They're like weird months. One's August and one's January. My sister is 29th of November. We're just all a bunch of November babies here. That's all it is. We're just a bunch of November babies. Uh, this one is very harsh, if you could say, as a whiskey, because it kind of reminds me of the Centauri whiskey. It, um, it has that scotch taste in it, that really heavy burnt oak wood, which a lot of the times I've read most of the, uh, Irish bottles, Irish why did I put an L before the R? Most of the Irish bottles actually do a separate distilling process with a separate charred barrel. Um, but some others only use, they don't change the uh, barrel. They use the same barrel, but they add wooden staves inside that cause it, causes it to transition the flavor and transition the color just a little bit. A lot of your whiskeys that are less than a year are a lot of your lighter color whiskeys because they don't have time to soak up the wood or any of that fancy stuff that happens in there. Most of the time, it's just kind of three years or more. <laughs> There's a 5.5% cherry beer here that is dangerous. There is a cherry one that I like. It's a tart. <clears throat> I don't remember how strong it is, but it's made by Nobles. It's really good. And then I tried one at the tap room. And it was called uh, Spider Bite, I believe is the name of it. And it was really good. I've been trying a bunch of different other ones the last few days or the last few weeks. I bought one today from Blue Moon. <clears throat> I don't know if you like pumpkin spice or not. But uh, it's for a select tasted group of people for that most part. Uh, it's $8 and some odd change here for a six pack. And it's called uh, Pumpkin. Yeah. Harvest pumpkin wheat. Harvest pumpkin wheat. It's 5.7% alcohol, and it is more watery tasting than anything, but the aftertaste is very pumpkin. Uh, 
I've never thought it, but our breweries here are impressive. I like tart and pumpkin. I love tarts. Um, that was one of the things that actually got me into trying those kind of drinks and stuff was the tarts because I like the sour drinks in them. Um, it gives you like a little weird, I don't know, sour drink that you don't really ever, you can't buy a sour drink that they're making beers out here that are sours. It's really cool. Uh, and pumpkin. I see, I like some pumpkin things. It smelled great. And the aftertaste was good. But the process in between was not so good. It felt like I was drinking water at first, and then the other flavor was kind of weird. Try out the Lost City Tangerine. It's a beer out of Cali. Joe loves it. The Lost City Tangerine. Okay. I'll have to try that one. Is it uh, mostly like anywhere that I can buy it, or is there certain places that it's better to buy it than others? Because I know, like, here, Ingles is the best place to go buy IPAs and stuff like that because they have a huge selection of that stuff. Our Walmarts and stuff have, like, this much. Another really good thing that I like in a lot of my whiskeys, and it's like the Jameson one has one like it, too, is butterscotch. Um, now, I don't like it so much as, like, a, like a vodka or anything like that. Buy it at a grocery store. Okay. I have to try it. Hopefully I get the car going tomorrow. I need to message uh, Levi. I was supposed to go and help him this weekend if I got the Mustang going, but still ain't got that thing going. <clears throat> this one here was really good. I've done this one this week. Uh I wanted a new scotch, but I wasn't entirely sure because the only scotches I've ever had was this double black uh, Johnny Walker and then my Johnny Walker red that's back here somewhere. And uh. and I was going to see what else I wanted to continue to get through with the whiskeys, and I wanted the new scotch. I was like, I don't know. I know more about whiskeys than I do scotches. And then I got that one, and I was like, hey, it turned out really, really good. We can pick you up. Yeah, but still got to work on the Mustang. I got to get that done this weekend. Because as of right now, I'm working. I'm waking up at like 3.40 a.m. every morning to take a uh, pretty lady to work instead of me sleeping in until my normal schedule to go into work. But pretty much I go to bed at like 11 or 12, and then I wake up at like almost 4, take her to work, and I come back, try to sleep. It doesn't really work most of the time. I really need to get the Mustang going. Mostly because if I do get the Mustang going tomorrow, hopefully I can wire the harness and everything tomorrow. If I can get that fixed, then I'll probably think I'm thinking I'm going to sell it and get rid of it and do something a little bit better that I ain't got to worry about breaking or not really breaking, but breaking down. Damn it! I know it sucks. Shit sucks. My sleep schedule is beyond, beyond, beyond out the window. I don't even know what time I go to bed anymore or wake up. I just, I didn't even, the other day I was doing a video and I didn't even know what day it was anymore. It was like Tuesday. I uh, get a truck. I do. I want a truck. Uh, I'm torn. If I do sell the car, I was either going to get a pickup, some sort of truck like that, or I wanted to get, uh, I really want one of these new Forerunners, or like the 2019 Forerunners with the, uh, I want it Desert Tan. With uh, black trim, black wheels. That's what I want. I don't have any specific brand of vehicle that I like more than the other. I like a little bit of everything. And it's tens are reliable. Hmm. I haven't had one. Uh, the only pickup I've ever had was an 84 Toyota pickup. And then I bought a Sonoma from a buddy of mine. That ended up being a bust. Uh, the crankshaft sensor went out in it, and it has like a high rate to break inside the block when you pull it apart. And I just ain't got time to pull the engine apart to replace the crank sensor to to drive a vehicle. I already had to pull the trans out of the Mustang just to replace a flywheel, and I put everything back together, and now it doesn't even start. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Ugh. 
One of these days, I'll get a uh, pretty lady to get rid of that Jeep of hers. One of these days. This music's so weird. But uh, my mom, growing up, she had a black S10. And that thing was really good. I think it was like a early 2000s. I don't know. It was like a rounder body. It looked kind of more like a Dakota. But I was kind of, it had a, it's like a sport version almost. I don't know. It was weird looking. Uh, damn, yep, yeah, that desert tan is nice. Toyota's awesome motor lasts forever, but body rots too fast. They do. They have very poor construction when, or engineering when it comes to their fr uh, framework. The only reason why I really do want a 4Runner is because I bought one last year uh, for like 250 bucks, 200 bucks, and then I rolled it three times, flipped it back over, and drove it back out of the field. And then kept driving it the next day, drove it forever a few weeks after that, and then sold it for more money than I paid for it. Or so, over somebody's dead body, will I get rid of Bessie? I'll replace every bolt and rocker or bolt, nook, and cranny first. We better start buying bolts and crannies because you're going to need all of them. I need to find something to fill this empty spot right here. It's very empty and vague. I wouldn't. Uh, S10 2.8 V6 with 700R46 with a 373 rear end. That's what you need. That's pretty much almost what I have. And the Mustang, I have the I have a 302. With a T5 five speed with 373 rear gears. I got uh, the B cam. I got 24 pound injectors mass air with a three inch aluminum drive shaft and a few other odd and ends on the inside. But I need something with better fuel mileage, mostly. Not really better fuel mileage, it doesn't really matter. But Something I don't have to worry about going out tomorrow and possibly having to replace the engine or possibly having to tear down the gears or tear down something because my right foot decides to go vroom when it doesn't need to go vroom. And especially in the blue car because it's very easy to do that. If you're dri When I'm driving the Mustang, I'm just like, you know what? It won't hurt to downshift real quick and tap the pedal a little harder than normal. And then whoop, whoop. And how it always happens. Hello, Kathy. For anybody that's just tuning in, the whiskey of the week is the Irishman. Only problem with Mustang is the assholes that owned it before, and you are not wrong. The only reason why I'm having issues out of this one is because the guy that had it before me had a six-pedal racing clutch in it, had a chip in the computer with an e-cam for uh, economy. That way they can pass emissions. And then, on top of all that, they let Stevie Wonder bore out the upper and take, and it looks like I don't, you can stick pennies down in these rivets. And then while they had the engine off the stand, so they let the engine fall while it was on the stand, and they re-welded the upper intake back together, which doesn't look bad. The upper intake looks good. The only downside is they messed up on the bottom ear on the passenger side of the engine because that's where the starter is, and that's what broke off was that bottom starter ear. When that broke off, they rewelded it back on. And I think they're off by like a slight hair, like almost like a hundredth of an inch because that's what's tearing apart my flywheels and my starter because whenever it – when you start it in the starter binds, it tweaks a little bit because that ear isn't straight. So it, start, it chips away and chips away just until it just eats up that starter and it eats up that flywheel. Because I had just put a brand new starter in it and a brand new flywheel in it a year ago. And I just done it again. And a throwout bearing. It was ridiculous. Because when I bought it, I put a new... 
flywheel. I put a new throwout bearing. I put a new clutch and pressure plate. I put a new harmonic balancer in, new serpentine belt. We ended up getting a new battery. And then I started doing all my other fancy stuff that I wanted to get done to it. Tinted the windows, got all the, uh, put the new gears in, put, the cam, put a new cam in, new fuel injection, new mass air. Got rid of that 800,000 pound original drive shaft, put it in aluminum. Uh, the exhaust is also very weird. Whoever owned it before me did a terrible job welding this thing together. So coming off the headers, you have like it goes from off the heads to the headers. It comes straight down because they're shorties and then it comes to a three inch down to like a two and a quarter to a two and three quarter down to another three inch between the, uh, the headers down past the X pipe through the actual exhaust. Yeah, Fords be like that sometimes. Woman, I can almost stick my hand in your frame rail behind your leaf spring. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Let me beat you up. I'll park Bessie in the middle of the road somewhere and leave her there. You don't think I ain't contemplated dropping the jack on the Mustang and letting it roll down and call an insurance company. You got me sadly mistaken. But you know what, huh? At least Ford is still Ford and not a Fiat. Bessie only runs because I keep fixing it. She didn't run last week. She was puking water everywhere. She didn't run long after me and you got together, and I had to put an engine in it. Oh, so Kim finally found a whiskey, well, whiskey that Pretty Lady likes. Southern Comfort. And she likes Buffalo Trace, but Southern Comfort is what she likes. That drink looks good. It is mighty good. Um, for those that are watching that didn't get to hear it earlier, it is fragrant notes of green apple and honey give away uh, pot still spice with summer fruits, deep finish fading into a spiced oak and butterscotch. We used it yesterday. We used the rest of it yesterday uh, for the video that I made. Uh, but she likes, she likes this. Um, I made a Southern Comfort eggnog yesterday <clears throat> in my massive... I have like a four gallon. I think it's is it a gallon or I don't know how big it is. It's massive. It's usually like right here, um, and it's got a spout and everything on it. I made drinks out of it yesterday. Yeah, I've been trying to every now and again when I do bottles or buy new bottles and stuff. She finally tries them, or she'll at least smell them and figure out not whether she wants to try them. She also liked the, uh, the amaretto. She took amaretto and she took Southern Comfort and she mixed it and made it with uh, strawberry Fanta and cherry lemon sundrop and made me a drink with it. It was really good. She's been quite the little mixer lately. I'm not drink that. I'm gonna have to get some. Start wearing blue jeans on there.
So, ah, did I tell you guys? I think I told you guys on Wednesday on the, about the creepy man that decided to mow our lawn. Uh, we were getting ready to go to dinner with uh, Pre Lady and her family. Uh, it was her mom's birthday uh, dinner. Well, our grass was getting a little tall. And I just ain't got to it yet. It's been raining, everything else. So I just really ain't had time to get to it, to mow it. It ain't really like tall, but it was like starting to get a little high. And pretty lady was like, there's some guy out here on a lawnmower. Well, that's, that's not really not weird, but that's weird. So I walk outside and I'm talking to the guy, and he's like, hey, man, I'm like, uh, I want to mow your yard. I'm like, um, all right, you know, I mean, you can mow it if you want. I'll give you like 20 bucks, 30 bucks to mow it. <clears throat> and he's like, no, man, I, I just want to mow it, man. And he's like, I don't never see you at home. Are you ever home? Anything? <laughs> I, like, I worry a lot. I kind of here and there. And uh, he's like, well, I'll mow it. I want, I want to mow it for you. It's getting a little tall. I don't want it to overgrow on you. I was like, all right, man. Whatever tickles your fancy. If you want to mow my yard while I go eat dinner and not me pay you, I mow till your heart blows it. I don't care. You do what you want. Your heart's content. My heart's content. You okay? Yeah, but my How did you break a sprayer? It fell on its head. You probably fell on your head at least once or twice. So we come back from the thing, the dinner, and the yard was done. Looked really good. So uh, weird man. <laughs> Make sure you give her a big awkward ass hug for her. I would tell her to come in here, but she doesn't like being on the camera. She'll probably be in bed by the time I get in there for bed. So I'll make sure to wake her up in the middle of the night and give her a weird hug. <laughs> she said she'll beat me up. What? Twice. She's going to beat me up twice. <laughs> yeah. Large one. Let's go, buddy. Been a while. A little while at least. Right. Well, that was that bottle, guys. That was the Irishman. This is the whiskey of the week. Um, next week, we'll do uh, probably a few more whiskeys. I want to make another ABC strip. Strip. ABC store trip. And uh, see what we come up with. I'm kind of running out of the bare minimum bottles. Uh, we started the channel out back in December buying a bunch of weird random bottles for like, like I've bought bottles as cheap as like $3, like big bottles. And, um, uh, this bottle here was like 40 bucks. The Buchanan's was like 50 bucks. I'm buying more of the expensive stuff now. That way you guys get a better, um, quality reaction about whether stuff tastes or not. What's up? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. I see here. Almost two years. Probably not that long. We've talked in between then. Are you finally out yet or are you still in? The end of mine is in February. February ends mine completely. Just got signed for, or just signed for another two? Heck yeah, man. You still with uh, A7 and 8, or did you move? 
Because I think you, last I heard, you got your five, didn't you? Right after we got home or shortly after. I've been talking to uh, Tony too. He's supposed to come over uh, uh, tomorrow. Possibly he's going to swing over. We're going to be doing burgers and dogs at the house at the new, at the house I got now. Um, still in the same town, but it's nice. Like me and the pretty lady. Yeah, I'm a five now. The unit I'm with is in Butner. Hmm. Okay. I know there was two units in Butner. Hmm. Well, I got... So I'm out. My, the end of my actual contracts in February. Uh, it's not bad being out. Some days I miss it. Some days I don't. There's three. Wow, I didn't know that. It's. <laughs> I can imagine. I could definitely imagine. I'm happy to be out. And I love what I, who I got to meet, all you guys. Um, but I'm so much happier doing this, just living my life normally. Um, I get paid a lot more than I was getting paid before, so really compensates a little bit differently. And then last year. When I broke my leg, uh, which actually me breaking my leg is what made me decide to do these YouTube videos because I was sitting at home all the time. And I was like, can't walk, can't go anywhere. Might as well do something with my life. And my cousin had been pushing me to do YouTube videos. was like, hey, might as well do YouTube videos. Yeah. And I uh, did, did YouTube videos and here we are. Because after that whole thing that happened... Yeah, I feel you, bro. I'm going to wait until I get comfortable to leave. I understand that, man. There's no reason. I got out abruptly. Um, I had, Honestly, if um, what would have happened, that whole ordeal in Texas, would have happened while we were still overseas, I would have re-enlisted for that six years and took that 20 grand and still been there. Uh, but, however, didn't go that way. Uh, I'm just, I like it. I ended up getting out and doing what I want to do. I don't have to worry about things. I ain't got to get up at 6 a.m. to do nothing. I ain't got to do nothing. I go to work. I make good money. I come home. I work on my cars. I got two class or three classics. I got a lot of, I'm doing pretty good now. Not living in no apartment no more. Actually, a house. Got a real good lady. Sometimes. Most times, she's a little asshole. But she's all right, I reckon. Yes, darling. They can see you. No. Yeah, home. I'm going to bed. Okay, I love you. <laughs> I'll be probably. I won't we'll be in there shortly, but I'll wake you up in a little bit. Okay, well, you'll have to come You always do. <clears throat> well, uh, yeah, it's living the life, living the dream. As long as you're happy, bro. Man, I can't. 
remember a time, honestly, where I wasn't like this. Like, being so, like, happy and content with myself and everything that I do every day is probably the best feeling I've ever had in my life. I wake up. I don't worry about nothing. I don't argue about nothing. I don't even have a temper, kind of. I just live, and I'm happy, and that's it. People don't piss me off as much anymore. I'm more laid back. People can say what they want. I don't retaliate. I don't sit here and try to smart mouth back. I just kind of just deal with it. Roll on, live my life. Because ain't nobody going to mess up my day anymore. Because every day's a great day. But sitting here for an hour, I do have to take a potty break. And I'll be right back. We love you too. We need to see y'all soon. Oh, and I have a beard now. Kind of. <clears throat> yeah, man, I moved into my house. It's also, or uh, moved into my house also. It's on the edge of Mount Holly in Charlotte. That's not too bad. Uh, Remember the apartment that you came to and seen me? I live maybe 10 minutes from there. That My camera got blurry. Uh, I live about 10 minutes from there, actually, now. So I'm not too far out. I like being close and where I can stop. This is weird focusing, camera. Uh, yeah, it's nice. How's the Mount Holly, Charlotte area? I'm going to be getting with uh, Logan soon. I told him that we need to do a video together. Him and his music has been going a long way. I've been watching a lot of his videos. Between my YouTube channel and his, we're doing pretty good. I did see, though, uh, a lot of other posts on the channel, on Facebook, that um, there's a lot of new people in the A7A. So I would, I think it would have been weird going back and there's just been a bunch of new people. It's good. Just a step in the homeowner direction. LOL, I'm slow texture. That's fine. I don't mind. Uh, yeah, we're renting right now. It's 700 a month. We're on about an acre and a half, almost two acres. We got two bedroom, one bath, huge dining room, great kitchen, living room, everything, uh, carport, nice stuff, uh, enclosed back porch, concreted back area patio, uh, outside storage, really nice, straight off the high, or straight off the road, and about five minutes from anything in town, and it's really good. We pay seven hundred. But I think uh, about another year or two, 
uh, either maybe next year, the year after, I think I'm going to go towards that homeowner's uh, step. I talked to uh, Priestley not too long ago, and he was filling me in on some of the VA stuff. And you had to be in for at least six years to even get VA benefits. And I was in technically eight once my stuff finishes in February. So it, it'll be uh, something I'm going to be looking into in the next little bit, especially now that my credit's at a decent place that I want it to be. This song sucks. That's great. Thanks, man. It's a nice little house. She decorates everything. I just kind of do me. I just fix things. Chang is a loan officer. If you need loan info, hmm. Yeah, I didn't know. I thought he worked for a tech company. Did he change jobs? I could have swore he worked for like a tech company or something. Maybe I'm wrong. But I got him on Facebook and Snap. I'll have to message him and see. Because I think uh, I think I'm gonna be getting possibly haven't fully decided yet uh, getting rid of the Mustang and probably buying something new. That way, I ain't gotta worry about breaking down and fixing it all the time. I'll take trumpets in this. Usually I only drink one at the end of the videos, but we'll do another one to finish up the video here. Yeah, he changed this year. Uh, I just have the bare bones to my house. Hey, yeah. If it wouldn't be for having this woman here, I wouldn't have anything. When we moved into this house. I had uh, nothing. Everything that I own pretty much is in this room except for my entertainment center and stuff like that but everything else she she brought the whole house almost furnished because of her um i've known her since middle school uh, i've known each other for almost 13 14 years now we used to hang out a lot in high school when she was with another guy uh we were all really good friends we was in rotc and stuff together and then I come home and bop, bop, bang, here we are. I wish my phone would stop autofocusing. I didn't turn it off. Yeah, I'm the exact same way. Whenever I came home and I told Miranda to just, we were done, uh, I took the stuff that I had with me overseas and moved to my buddy's house. And that was it. And then I went over and picked up a few things and got my building moved to my uh to his house and that was it i didn't take anything no furniture no nothing the only thing i took was my entertainment center my computers and um my game system that was it other than that it was just clothes i got my uniform everything else but i didn't take anything nothing i packed up in three bags and left that was it <laughs> Everything can be replaced. Mental health is not something easily replaced. But if you take your stuff and you leave, you can be as happy as you want to be. And here I am, living the great life. Not that weird white kid from the trailer park no more. Still that weird white kid. Oh, man, it's great timing. Finally come back around for y'all. It did. It finally came around. 
Um, there was a little thing when we was in school where I was like, man, I kind of got a crush on that one. But uh. never led to anything. We've always been friends. We've always chatted and stuff still. So, yeah, I'm enjoying my single life. You always liked that bachelor life. You always liked it. I'm not much of a a lone guy. I like to uh, I don't like being alone. I guess you could say, as emasculating as that kind of sounds, but it's kind of what it is. Being alone sucks. The man himself, Logan. We were just talking about you a few minutes ago, or I was. Oh, yeah. 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 <sighs> now I was trying to find what y'all had and each thing left me with searching, bro. But, man, honestly, what I had isn't something you wanted. I mean... It may have seemed great on the outside, but on the inside, it wasn't that great. The right thing will always come when it's supposed to come. You can't rush it. You can't push it. It ain't something you can even choose. That shit just happened, man. And that's what I – it took me a long time to develop patience and the adaptability to be able to just sit back, relax, and let things just roll. And whatever happens, happens. I have the worst ADHD and movement. I like to always do stuff. I have to keep moving, keep guessing, keep choosing. And for me to sit back and learn that you got to just wait and it's going to happen. By God, that sh that's true. I got blessed with this one. And I couldn't be more happy. And all it took was a little bit of wait. It might have took 13 years to wait, but it, it happened, you know? Sometimes you never know what happens until it happens. And it's usually right underneath the nose. You don't even know it's there. Yeah, I agree. And now I'm enjoying growing myself. That's all you can do. All you can do is grow and prosper. That's what I love about everything that I do. Is I just grow. That's what I do. It ain't about the money. I don't care how much. I don't care about where I'm at. It's about who I'm with and the memories I make. Because the only things you cannot buy in this life is love, and you can't buy memories. And that's it. Memories are made by yourself, and love is something that you grow into. And it took me a long time to do that one. Because I used to lose my temper all the time. Anytime, anytime the opportunity presented itself, I was, I was ready to fight all the time. All the time. I was ready to fight. We could blink three steps shy of two shots, and I'll fight anybody in that bar. I don't care. Now I have 60, probably 60 plus bottles in my room, and I might drink half a shot a day. Uh, I'll drink that. <coughs> Cheers, bro. Well, let me grab a drink. I mean, we can grab one too. Uh, I got a shot glass. Uh, Where my other barrel go? Might be more washed. We're gonna pull out the good stuff. Uh, we're gonna pull out the, the good scotch. So, um, I'm about as redneck as I come and it's about as weird as it gets to opening things. Uh, 
I, it took me like seven minutes out of an entire video to figure out how to pour this. Um, see, where I'm from, you just drink whiskey from the bottle. This thing has a cap in it, and it has a ball. And to pour a shot, or what you don't really shot this, this is scotch, but to drink it, you have to pour like you're going to pour it, and then you got to shake it, and then it pours. It's weird. It's weird. But um, cheers to life, learning, and memories. Because there's some memories you can't give back, and there's some memories that ain't been made, but there's a life waiting that we ain't seen yet. Because the road ain't finished being paved. Cheers, guys. <sighs> Nothing better than scotch. I love scotch. Where is it? Oh, okay, so. Uh, I used it yesterday. I... You're talking about the Bud Light thing that used to be right here, right? It's like it's it's like this tall. Uh I made I made a eggnog uh, a Southern Comfort eggnog drink. Um, pretty much what you do is you go buy Southern Comfort eggnog and you buy regular Southern Comfort. You do one quart eggnog you do a cup or however much of the red uh, the southern comfort and you mix it together i made like 30 couple odd ounces of it yesterday in the video and it, it was it filled up pretty good um there's a fireball one i posted the video on the youtube channel me making it yesterday um i think i'm gonna probably put some pj in it maybe tomorrow uh, we're going to be throwing some burgers and dogs on the grill. Might have a few people over. Um, but might make some good old vodka for a little bit in there and throw it in there with some ice and then chill it over. I ain't decided quite yet what the plan is for tomorrow. <laughs> Honestly, didn't think I was ever going to use it. And I was like, I was trying to figure out how I was going to make the video yesterday because the thing called for like a jar this size of uh, eggnog and then you wanted a cup size full of the um, regular drink and or the regular whiskey. And I was like, I don't know what I'm, what I'm going to do. And I was like, and pretty lady come on. She's like, why don't you use that thing? And I was like, you know what? It's a good idea. But I still do have the helmet. I kept the helmet piece off of it. <laughs> so if this uh, Lodge One tells you how big it is, the helmet would even fit on my head. So this is the other piece is about like this tall off of it, and then it has its lid, and it has another topper on it. But it's it's a fun little thing. Now that I think about it, I should probably take it off and make a helmet out of it. Make me a beer helmet. Uh, sounds tasty. It was. It was really good. And I'm not a fan of eggnog, and it actually ended up being really good. Uh, the way it just kind of like went together with each other was really good. They make a fireball one, so I think next week I'm going to make the fireball one. I'll buy some fireball. And I'll buy the eggnog fire and make that up and see what it tastes like. I tried today. Uh, today's video on the YouTube channel was uh, Blue Moon Harvest Pumpkin Wheat. It's their uh, pumpkin spice beer. It's not, I wouldn't buy it again. It smells great. The aftertaste is really good, but the actual drink itself isn't that great. 
for a six pack, it was eight dollars and eight and a half dollars, something like that. So it's probably not something I'd go ahead and buy again, in my opinion. Mostly, it's just something I, want, I didn't enjoy. Maybe if you like more pumpkin than I do, or a little bit more of that pumpkin spice stuff, that might be something you like. But for me, it just wasn't it. It just wasn't it. But it is kind of strong for a spice beer, I guess you could say. It's 5.7% alcohol, somewhere around there. So, I mean, you kind of win with the percentage of the alcohol that's inside of it. Because most of the time when you go to buy a beer, everybody's like, well, that beer is expensive. Well, that beer is expensive because of the amount of alcohol that's in it. It's like uh, Johnny Walker Blue Label. It's one of the more expensive scotches. It's a almost $300 bottle of scotch. Well, you can buy an airplane shooter for $20, $30, and that's this big. You go to a bar and you order a Johnny Walker shot, you're going to pay $30 for that shot, maybe $50. And they're, they're expensive for when it comes to that stuff. You know, it's really hard to determine that kind of output when it comes to money. Like, the best way that I can contribute to, like, hey, well, I paid, like the Buchanan's, it's a, how, yeah, it's a 12-year-old scotch, and I paid over 50 bucks for it. But it's a 12-year-old scotch. It's aged. It has that flavor. It has that taste. It has that uh, potency. It has that 80 proof in there, that barrel, the taste that, that you can't just get rid of. You can't get that taste out of a three-year-old whiskey or a three-year-old scotch like Johnny Walker's up there. You can't do that. It takes time to create a really good drink, and once you create that drink, you're going to want your money for it. It'd be like me if I sit here and I make the best drink on this planet and it takes me six years to do it and I don't make no money for six years. When I sell that bottle, I'm going to want to make money. I'm not going to want to waste six years of my life. If I, it takes me six years to make 100 bottles of the best shit I've ever made, why would I pay $10 for that bottle? Pay $30, $40 for that bottle. Make my money's worth inside that processing of that bottle. But last one. And Logan, you guys need to come hang out sometime soon. Or I can come y'all's way. doesn't matter. We'll work it out either way. And Logan, we need to do a video together soon. We'll drink some whiskey and talk music. Well, you can talk music. I'll drink whiskey and talk whiskey. And, uh, yeah. There's a lot to think about when it comes. There's a lot. I've learned so much when it comes to buying drinks and whiskey. Is... <clears throat> I've bought some ten, five, ten dollar whiskeys that are better than sixty dollar whiskeys. It's weird. It really is weird that I've bought. Let's see here. We've done a video every, almost every day since December twelfth of last year, and I've bought every bottle. I'll drink it till let's get. It. Hey, you let me know when you're good, bro. We got it. Um, but yeah, it's. I, it's unbelievable the amount of bottles under like twenty dollars or under fifteen dollars. They're so much better than these forty, fifty, sixty dollar bottles. I go, I broke the seal. I'll be right back, and I'll tell you one bottle that I absolutely hated.
So, right before, uh, right before I went, uh, we all went overseas. I uh, had a little going away kind of little party. Just me, my cousin, my brother, and my cousin's girlfriend at the time. Uh, and I spent like three hundred dollars on some bottles or something. I can't remember what all I bought, but one bottle stuck out to me in particularly because it was terrible. And it was Remy Martin. It was the black bottle with the red man on it, I believe. But it is, I spent like $70 just on that one, and I hated it. Um, it was not a great bottle. My buddy, he turned, he had a birthday while we were gone, and I bought him a bottle for his birthday that was $140-something for his birthday. It was a bottle he's always wanted, and he tried it, and he didn't like it. He said it was bad. It was not good. And the fact that you can buy like a a six dollar bottle of whiskey and it'd be better than a hundred dollar bottle of whiskey i mean most people most of these older gentlemen are out here drinking these weird drinks and they're like and everybody talks a lot of junk down on them and they're like well they're just buying that because they're cheap and they don't want to spend a lot of money most of the time these old cats they know what's good and they spend money on what's good uh, not just because it's a cheap brand. Most Some people are like that. But most of the time when they go to buy that drink or get that drink that's $10, $15, they're buying it because it's good and not because it's a cheap drunk, you know? I mean, anybody can go spend less than $6 at an ABC store and get wasted. But most of your older guys that go in there and spend less than $15 and they're picking out the same bottle every single time, there's probably money behind it that says that that bottle is probably one of the best bottles in there because of the flavor and the taste. If not, you wouldn't drink it so much. It's like me. If I had a dollar for every time since just since last year that I got caught an alcoholic, I could probably rebuy 90% of this entire channel that I've done videos on. Uh, people call me an alcoholic on the regular basis. But realistically, I come home and I make my YouTube video. I'll make my video and it's usually maybe a shot and a half or so, if that. Uh, and then on now, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I'll have a beer in the beginning, a beer at the end, and a drink in the middle. But I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> it, it's funny how people perceive things compared to how they really are, in my opinion. Because, I mean, I don't really care for people's opinion, because I don't care. I'm, I'm me, and if they don't like me, then bug them, because <laughs> I don't care. Um, it's just funny that I get called an alcoholic, mostly because I, I was an alcoholic. I used to be. I used to drink, not because it was fun, but because I needed to or wanted to, and that I was going to have that drink. Now, if I was an alcoholic, this shelves behind me, these shelves behind me would not be full. They would be empty all the time. It takes me any it takes me like two to three weeks, maybe four sometimes, to fend even a case of beer out of the fridge to finish it. Back about a year and a half ago or a year ago, I would drink seven or eight cases a week <laughs> between me and a couple other guys, but still, I mean, it's a lot of beer. And then again, I had a broke leg, so I didn't go anywhere. Woo! Somebody called the Wambalance. At <sighs> YouTube! You are down to the final four. Uh, all these notifications on my phone now. Uh, uploading, uploading. Okay. Uh, uh, it's been a great night. I want to thank everybody that showed up. You guys are truly awesome. So thank you guys for watching and for showing up. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't do these all the time. Because who would be there? It doesn't. But then again, numbers are just numbers, and that's all it is. Guys, 
Thanks for watching. This one's for you. Guys, you're the best. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a wonderful night. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with another brand new video as always because we post videos every single day here. And until then, when we don't, we will. Because, guys, you're the best. Thanks for everything you do. And I'll see you then. Maybe we know the live coming up soon. We don't know. We'll see how it goes. Catch you later.